today is the 128th anniversary of the Bowes Museum opening its doors to the public. And um, I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes, really, it's not going to be a long conversation, but about the founders, John Bowes and Josephine. John, English, and uh, from up this part of the world in Teesdale, and Josephine, Parisian, uh, the daughter of a clockmaker in Paris. Uh, they fell in love in the 1850s, and they were together for their entire lives. Uh, I've said to you before that neither of them saw the Bose Museum open its doors to the public, which is a very tragic story in a sense. Um, let's just talk about John for a moment. Here he is portrayed um, by a French artist in 1863, uh, a, a, a chap called Fayen. Here he is in all his splendour. 1863, he's arrived back from Paris, um, moved back to Teesdale, where the Bose Museum is. If we move over to Josephine, um, this is a portrait of her uh, in 1850. Um, John and Josephine were still living in France at this point in time. They had a house in Paris and they had a, a chateau at Lucienne on the fringes of, of, of Paris on the Seine. Um, what we're looking at is a very, very fashionable wo woman. If you look at her headgear and you look at her shoes, um, she is wearing a uh, Moroccan dress and in 1848, two years earlier, um, the French had had a very successful campaign in North Africa and she's wearing what was really, really trendy costume for the time. Um, this is Bernadine, Bernadine their Labrador. Also bear in mind that around 1850 when this portrait was painted, Labradors were new into Europe. They were very fashionable dogs. So she's wearing very fashionable costume. She's got a very fashionable dog and she's got manuscripts uh, for plays. She has ceased being an actress on the Parisian stage in the Variety Theatre where she and John fell in love together. Um, but she's still looking at, at scripts for plays. Um, this is a very, for 1850, this is a very, very contemporary portrait of a very contemporary woman, an art collector. I've always been fascinated by these marble busts of um, babies, infants. And uh, over the years, I've, I've always displayed them underneath the portraits of John and Josephine. And part of the reason I'm fascinated by their acquisition of these is, is that um, John and Josephine, in their lifetime, uh, never had children. And there are images like this and sculptures like this all over the museum. And I, I wonder um, why they purchased them. And I wonder whether it is a, a reflection of the fact that between John and Josephine, they didn't have children themselves, uh, but they were part of a very loving companionship. Uh, and it appears to me that, you know, in, 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 in 2020, um, 128 years after the Bows opened, these are almost a reflection of what they didn't have, but the Bows Museum was what they were going to give to the world around them.
This mirror has a portrait of Josephine Burns, again from the 1850s, and uh, a few years ago, you see this dress here, which is a recreation made by uh, an Italian costume designer friend of ours who does lots of stuff, stuff for BBC uh, drama series. And it's a recreation of the dress that Josephine wears here. And you can see quite how slim she was. Um, this room, this gallery, has a lot of artefacts. What's quite interesting is, is that John Josephine in the 1850s and 60s, in the 1870s, they were buying things for this museum. But what we have in this room uh, are objects from their chateau, the Chateau de Barry, uh, Lucien on the fringes, outskirts of Paris, where they lived uh, in the 1850s through to 1862 before they moved back to England to, to build the Bose Museum. So we have a combination of a really interesting contrast of of furniture and pictures and collections that they were buying for the museum, but also in this room, what you see is a recreation of what they had in Chateau de Barry in uh, Lucien in the early 1860s. in the collection. It was displayed at the Paris International, International Exhibition in 1867 <coughs> that John Josephine attended. Um, it was there that they saw uh, the Silver Swan, which was already a century old. Uh, Mark Twain, the American writer, visited the, this exhibition and he saw he will have seen this. Uh, and he also saw the Silver Swan because he wrote about it and said what a wonderful thing it was. And John and Josephine spent several years uh, working to acquire what is the most iconic object in the collection. But this remains one of my favourite objects. Uh, it, it was made by a, a, a sculpture, a maker, a metal worker called Ferdinand uh, Barbadien. Um, and this these images here, these sculptures are typical of Barbadien and what he was doing in the mid to uh, second half of the 19th century. Uh, but the objects that fascinate me are these sort of uh, satires here um, in the middle part of the picture. And at the time this, this mirror was being made, um, Rodin, one of the greatest sculptures of the 19th century of, uh, in the world um, entered uh, Barbadien's uh, studio. And I have a feeling that these are very early works by Rodin and they're absolutely beautiful and beautifully crafted and make this mirror one of the most important images in the collection. and, uh, and, and uh, the uh, pandemic that we're dealing with, these doors are closed. But they are a work of art in themselves that for most of us and our public and our visitors, we, we sort of take for granted, but they are fantastic pieces of architecture. Um, they were made in Paris, they're made of iron, and each one, and I will tap each of them, are made of iron 
and they each weigh five tons. So they're massive constructions and they uh, were made in Paris. They were transported by boat to London and then by train from London to Barnard Castle. Um, but as you see, they are magnificent things in their own right.